Okay, we're on the 63 Westinghouse record player console that I showed you in a recent video and been working on the amplifier. I've replaced all the capacitors and cleaned the controls. And here are the original capacitors, a four section can electrolytic, which is not in the best of shape. And its values are 150 microfarad, 200 working volt, 80 microfarad, 150 volt, 20 microfarad, 150 volt, and 100 microfarad, 25 volt, which is the cathode bypass cap for the output tube. And for the 150 microfarad, I didn't have that value in stock, so I had to parallel a 100 microfarad and a 68 microfarad to give me the correct value. Everything else I pretty much had the correct values for. And this electrolytic capacitor here, which is a 20 microfarad, 25 volt, which is the cathode bypass cap for the preamp tube, which is a 12AX7. And these two paper capacitors right here, one's a Point, point oh four seven and a point oh three three microfarad. Both of them were a little leaky. And one of the 50C5 output tubes had some leakage and some grid emissions, so we replaced that. And I'm also going to replace the 12AX7. It didn't check exactly right, so I'm going to replace that too. And at some point in time, somebody did some repair work to this. They replaced the original silicon rectifier diode, which I'm trying to decide whether to leave this in there or put a new modern diode in its place. And they replaced the 47 ohm fusible resistor here. The original is supposed to be a 3 watt resistor. This looks bigger than that. And the only thing they had at the parts house is a was a 5 watt resistor. So that's what we're going to use there. And this resistor here is the cathode bypass resistor for the audio output tube. It's a 100 ohm 2 watt resistor. And it, you know, it may prove to be reliable and last another 50 years, but I think I'm going to go ahead and replace it with a 100 ohm 5 watt resistor. And of course the pickup cartridge was bad and the record changer. This is a Euphonics U8 cartridge. It actually still has output, but not very much output, and it really sounded like crap. So I thought I could just go down to the local parts house and buy a Fansteel P226 or P228 universal replacement cartridge. I used to buy them there all day long, but turns out they no longer carry them. They said they had a bunch of them in stock and sold them all to one person and they probably would never get any more. But it seems like there's more and more parts that I'm having to order now that I used to could just run down to the parts house and get, which really irritates me, but that's life, I guess. I'm, I'm probably one of the few people in this town that actually repairs this kind of equipment, so that's probably why the parts house doesn't feel the need to stock parts for these old models. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and replace these resistors and do a little minor work finishing up on this amp, and it should be good to go. Okay, the amplifier is now ready, to, ready for a test as far as I'm concerned. We've replaced all the capacitors, any resistors that were out of tolerance and corrected a couple of hack repair jobs that were made over the years and replaced a couple of tubes of one of the 50C5s and the 12AX7. And one thing I want to bring to your attention, you're probably wondering what these two long brown things are. Well, these are called couplets and these are actually the forerunner to the modern integrated circuit. No, let me correct that. The forerunner to the integrated circuit was when Atwater Kent found it feasible to 
throw a transformer and a bunch of capacitors and resistors and a filter choke all in the same can and sealing it with tar. But anyway, all jokes aside, these devices contain several resistors and capacitors all in a compact little network and its circuit location is to is between the driver stage and the audio output stage to couple the driver to the output stage and there's also some circuitry in there having to do with the tone control they usually don't go bad I think in 20 something years of doing this I've only seen these couplets go bad once or twice in a radio or a phonograph fortunately in the schematic they usually give you the value of the internal components so if one of these should fail you can fabricate one by using individual components and you can see where I replaced the filter capacitor this particular set used more than one terminal for ground but since the original filter capacitor was in a metal case with obviously all four ground tabs common to the metal case you know that was not an issue but when replacing one of these caps with modern capacitors you have to remember to have all your grounds connected I'll admit one time a few years ago I replaced one of these caps on a radio and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing and then the radio wouldn't work and then I got to looking and I said to myself you dummy you didn't hook all the grounds together okay let's go put this back in the cabinet and connect it connect it to the speakers and we'll see if it'll pass on pass an audio signal and here's the cabinet you might rec recall in the last video that I showed that the speakers were missing from this console when I got it but fortunately I had a couple of speakers that I robbed from an old junk unit so that solved that problem and I soldered new wires onto the speakers and everything's ready to be plugged into the amplifier okay here we are back together tubes lit up Let's see if this passes the buzz test and I don't have the volume nearly all the way up But yep, as far as I'm concerned, the amplifier is fixed. Okay, that'll conclude this video. And in the next video, I will get the record changer going and we should be back in business. Okay, thanks for watching and more to come later.